Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to my channel, another video. So what is the very best upper body exercise that you could do for mountain biking or motocross? Uh, if you only had to pick one and it was the only exercise you could do all year long, which exercise would basically give you the best overall results? Um, it was something I was thinking about a little bit and I thought it was kind of interesting, so I thought I would share it with you today. Now, obviously, if you guys are real serious about riding at a high level in either one of these sports, you should have a well-rounded strength routine, lower body and upper body with a bunch of different exercises. They're kind of going to hit everything um, that you need to work on. But if you did only have to pick one, what would it be? I also thought it would be cool to include motocross riders into this video. I've raced a lot of motocross earlier in my life. Um, a lot of the strength coaches I've worked with work with both professional motocross and mountain bike um, athletes. And in my opinion, the crossover as far as the types of exercises you do are pretty much identical. So I thought this would basically be cool to kind of lump everybody into this, help everybody out and kind of give you my opinion. So um, also as a bonus, Instead of doing an entire video on just one exercise, I thought it would be cool to get a couple of different opinions. So I hit up both of my primary strength coaches that I've worked with over the last 10 years of my career. And I asked them, I said, hey guys, um, and I knew this was gonna be a bit of a cringy question to them because they're, they're so thinking like well-rounded programs. But I said, if you had to only pick one exercise that would give you the best over, upper body strength and that was the only one you could do, which one would you guys pick? Um, so I told them mine, they sent me their, their favorite exercises. So in this video, I'd like to cover all three with you, kind of go through each one. Um, a lot of these are gonna be pretty similar to things you may have seen um, in the past, but each one has been tweaked a little bit to kind of match the needs uh, strength-wise that you need when riding specifically. Um, so some of the positions are a little modified and kind of changed up a little bit to kind of uh, be specific to what you would see on the bike. So uh, let's get right into it. All right, so first exercise comes straight from my boy Marcus Philly. Um, I'll link to his basic information down in the description. He's my primary strength coach right now who I do all my gym training with. Um, his favorite exercise is the Turkish get up. So I'll demonstrate that now. Um, a couple things you can do to kind of change this up a little bit is use a kettlebell instead of a dumbbell. That kind of will help you on your grip strength and also wrist stability as well, um, especially as you start to add heavier kettlebells. Um, I like this exercise because it involves a lot of upper body um, from core strength to shoulder strength. Um, all that kind of stuff, it really is a stable exercise where you need to maintain good posture, good stability all the way through the exercise as you're working through a bunch of different movements. So um, Turkish get up, you've probably seen them before, but if not, kind of looks something like this. So you'll start basically laying flat on the floor. You will press the kettlebell up. You'll bend the same knee up as your working arm. Um, some people will like to reach back like this as they come out. I like to just come straight up on my elbow so that you have to get a good crunch in um, first. So basically you're gonna sit up to your elbow, come up to your hand, then you bridge, important to get that strong. Get that leg to come through. Straighten up, perform the lunge, complete the exercise. Um, a lot of this too, you will stay pretty focused on this uh, kettlebell throughout this exercise instead of looking down at the floor and stuff like that. So you might do your lunge. From that point, leg kicks over, pretty much make contact with the kettlebell, reach back, bridge, sit, back to the elbow, and then back down. So pretty basic, we'll switch angles here. If you want to make it a little harder, you can perform a press at the bottom of each rep. Knee comes up, sit up to the elbow, up to the hand, straighten out, perform the lunge, back down, reach, bridge, back to the elbow, and then back down. So as you can see, you're moving around a little bit. Um, you're having to twist. You are definitely engaging the lower body a little bit as well, but the strength and stability required to keep that thing stable overhead, not rocking as you're bending, twisting, lunging, all that stuff is really good. So that's the Turkish get up. Okay, so the second exercise that we're gonna do comes from Todd Shimluk, who has been one of my trainers off and on for the last 10 years. 
Um, and that is the clean and press. I had a laugh when I texted him because I basically didn't need to message him. I knew exactly what the exercise was going to be that he would recommend. It is one of his favorites for sure. Um, and it's basically a modified version of a clean and press. He calls it the Performax clean and press. Um, and it is, as you will see, it's much different than a standard clean and press. So in a normal clean and press, as many of you know, it's a pretty explosive lower body movement where you're basically really cleaning the bar off the ground through this real like fast um, explosive motion. Then you're catching the bar here at the center point, you're pausing, little dip and then exploding overhead. Then you catch the bar back here and then drop it to the floor. So it's really basically two motions where you're really cleaning it off the ground, catching it, pressing and then setting it back down. So this is very different in that you are, it is one continuous motion, there's no pause, um, and it is done at the same pace. Nothing is explosive. So it really makes you have to control that weight with your upper body because your lower body is very much secondary. It's just kind of ex um, assisting along the way. So um, to demonstrate this, we'll start basically without the bar here. And you're gonna start in the same position. So nice straight back always kind of in like this deadlift, getting ready to clean sort of stance. As you start to stand, these arms will move at the same time. So it's not this like start to stand up and then pull your arms up. Basically, this is all done in one continuous motion. You start to stand. As you get to basically this center point where you're standing all the way up, your arms should be right here parallel. Um, another thing that you'll notice is that I'm always at 90 degrees with my arms. Um, these elbows are never dipping in here. Um, I'm never coming in this way or that way. And basically everything is staying in this motion. So as you stand up, this starts to come up and then goes directly overhead. As you come back down, you're not dropping the weight. You're controlling it. You're externally or you're rotating back the other way with your shoulders as you set it back to the floor. So it eventually looks like this. Straight back down. The bar is moving basically on a plane, the same distance from my body. It's not coming out here. So it really means that this shoulder, these shoulders gotta stay back and this just needs to rotate basically as it's coming through. So again, this pulls off the ground. It's kind of tricky for me to do so slow. As you come back down, completely controlled back down. So as you can see, um, you're really engaging the core, your back as you come up and extending, and these shoulders, you're getting this pull off the ground, you're getting a really solid external rotation, and then the press at the top, and it is all being performed and basically one plane of movement non-stop. So at no point do you get to kind of like help it up. Um, you've really got to control it all the way up and control it all the way back to the floor. So um, from the side, here's what it looks like. Let me get a little bit closer. It's coming up and overhead. Just like that. So we'll perform a few here. With the bar, try not to run out of there when I'm talking. Um, you'll grab this a little bit wider, so about, uh, I'd say like handlebar uh, width. Your nice strong back position to start, and as you clean off the floor, these arms move at the same time. Keeping this bar close to your body the whole way. And there you go. So as you can see, a lot different than the standard clean and press. <laughs> a lot more upper body involved. Um, it will take you a little bit of timing or time to get the timing down, kind of get everything right, but be patient with it and uh, you'll get it. So there you go, clean and press. All right, so time for the final exercise and my personal favorite. And I want to take a little credit because I feel like those other two were a little cheating because they had some lower body uh, involved, but we'll let that go. So. My favorite exercise, if I had to do one that was just upper body, would basically be a push-up to row with dumbbells. 
Um, I do it a little bit different than maybe you've seen it to kind of make it more rotting specific. But to me, I really like it because you are getting a push up in, in a position that's similar to how you would take an impact on the bike. Um, so you get the push up, you're also getting a row in and you're getting a lot of shoulder stability and having to basically stabilize on the arm that's going to stick on the ground while you're rowing. Um, and you're also getting a ton of core strength because you do not want to like rotate as you're rowing. So to me, it's the best overall exercise and I do a few things to basically change it up to make it more, like I said, rotting specific. So a lot of times you've probably seen this row perform with the dumbbells like this. And you basically will perform the roll like that. Maybe you do a press and then a row. Um, that's fine, but when the dumbbells are basically face forward like this, if you do the press, you're a lot more in your triceps and less in your chest, which are the big muscles. So again, if you could only do one exercise, to me, I'd rather be working on that strong kind of chest muscle area where you're gonna be taking the big impacts when you ride. Um, also, when you row, you're rowing in a way where where you are building good strength, but it is different than how you would row on a bike where you're gonna be rowing like this. So what I like to do is basically turn the dumbbells out like this. Um, I will go basically to make it harder, you can go a little wider with your arms, like handlebar width or a little bit, usually a little bit narrower. You're gonna have to go a little wider with your legs to stabilize and you perform the, pre the push up and then the row. And then the other side. And you're basically trying to get no shifting this way. Sometimes you will kind of move one way or the other to stabilize. But as you perform that row, this elbow is staying out at side at 90 degrees. It's not coming basically in here. It's staying out like it would when you ride. So that's most important from your press. So as you can see, it's, it's made a lot more difficult in that elbow positioning, basically keeping everything out of the side, forcing yourself to row here and not cheat it in here. Um, a big weakness I see in a lot of riders is they allow the bike to come too far into here. So you're really getting into these smaller muscles, triceps, stuff like that, instead of taking the impact into the chest where you got these big, strong muscles to support the impact. So as you can see, elbow out with that row, it really forces a lot of core strength. Um, it gets that row in a way that's similar to how we ride and you get a nice press off the floor. Um, and as you get stronger, you can obviously add more weight to this and uh, you will get basically better as you go. So um, there you go. There's three exercises, kind of all of our favorites on what we think are the best. Hopefully uh, you learn something, you can implement one or all of these into your upper body routine. It'll help you on the bike. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.